as promised. It's 20 to 10. We welcome back three loyal friends of the programme. Uh, James Bond fan Peter Hitchens is the author <laughs> and columnist for the Mail on Sunday. Hello, Peter. Good morning. I'm going to get. I'm going to force you before you leave this programme to say something about James Bond. Okay. Grace Dent, author and restaurant critic, and a key ingredient <laughs> to MasterChef. Hello, Grace. Yes. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Welcome, yeah. welcome back. Lovely to hear you. Um, Maria McCurlane is, mm -hmm. is the actor most recently in Killing Eve, who returns to Radio 2 this week as Graham Norton's agony aunt. I always <laughs> ask you, Maria, does he need one? Of course he does. We all need one. How nice to hear you, Paddy and uh, Grace and Peter, this morning. Welcome. And what a, what a friendly way to begin. Hey. <laughs> Let's um, let's ask you, Grace. There's a slight delay on your line, so we, we, at the risk of talking over you, can you go first with the front page? Oh, the one that I've uh, chosen. It's uh, is from the Sunday Times. It's a food one because I'm all about food. It's it's a bittersweet story about uh, about turkeys. Well, I mean, is, tur is Christmas ever a good time for turkeys? No, it isn't. <laughs> it's going to be worse this year because uh, because of the rule of six. At Christmas, the turkey farmers don't know whether to slaughter early or put them on a crash diet because people aren't going to want really, really big turkeys. So, yeah, it's a story about the rule of six ruining Christmas. I'd and also the rule of six being bad for turkeys. I, I don't personally think the rule of six is going to be that bad for me at Christmas. I don't think I like even six people anyway. So, uh, and two of those would be Labradors. But I do realise that th this is a hard time for people and also a hard time for turkeys. Um, I, I'm just on this before we, we lose this subject, because there's many other things to discuss. Do you appreciate good turkey on the plate? <laughs> I don't think anybody really appreciates turkey, things that we keep on doing. I mean, at the end of the day, it is just a big dry chicken that tastes weirdly of fish. But we do keep doing it because <laughs> I think what this will do every year is... Uh, Every year, we, we all across the country have a, a debate whether we should have turkey again. And then we keep going back to it. Maybe this is the year it stops. This could be the year. Farmers downsize Turkey for Rule of Six, the Sunday Times. Now, there are very serious front page issues which both Maria and Peter want to bring to our attention. Maria, you want to talk to us about the front page of the Mail on Sunday? Uh, yes, the Mail on Sunday's headline is Boris's dad broke his mum's nose and she ended up in hospital. Um, I won't say anything further about that other than to say that there are 11 pages in the Mail on Sunday uh, from Tom Power Bower's biography of um, uh, well, his book about uh, Boris and his dad and, um, you know, speaking to ex-wives and speaking to current wives and speaking to uh, Boris's father or his father's wife. And it, basically we find out that Boris is a lonely man looking for a soulmate. I don't know if that's meant to make us feel sorry for him, but basically that's everyone on Tinder. So this is basically the big splash in your, <laughs> in your newspaper, Peter Hitchens, the yes. Mail on Sunday. Sunday, what, what, what have you read, read into it? Well, there are lots of things about it. One of them is that the Prime Minister's life has been a sort of Greek tragedy. It is, uh, it is a series of, of, of appalling disasters and things which have to be important because they must have made such an impact on his life and on his nature. And here he is now, the head of our government. So completely fascinating from start to finish and also very, very distressing. And it must be distressing uh, for for the family to have this, which obviously they've all known about for years, uh, revealed. But this is the the price which people pay for public life. And there's another point which strikes me looking at it, which is that in so many cases, I think public life is a refuge from private life. Uh, people seek success and popularity in, in public life because their private life is so unsatisfactory or worrying or frightening or distressing. Mm. And I think this may be a very, very uh, striking example of that. But it, it, it is, uh, I have to say, uh, it is my newspaper and I would say it anyway, but it is an extraordinarily gripping read. Uh, Grace Dent, the same, the same headline that Maria picked, Boris's dad broke his mum's nose. This is a, a shocking thing yeah. for readers, perhaps. What, what You've picked it for us, so you want to talk to us about it as well? Well. well, you know, I picked it because I just think when you actually look at this story as well, and you look at the, uh, you know, you look at the biography that it's coming from, this isn't, I mean, you can't rank these in the worst things. There's, there's, there's things that 
are just as bad when you go through this. It's like Maria's saying, there's pages and pages and pages of this that doesn't uh, present Stanley in a very, a very bright light. And it's not a vintage time for him anyway. It really does feel like he's been, um, you know, dogged by pictures of him breaking rules all week. Uh, yeah, so not not a great time um, in his personal this, history, really. This family. Well, thank you very much, Maria, for bringing that to the discussion. And as I've mentioned, as Maria mentioned, excuse me, 11 pages of coverage in the mm. mail on Sunday. So let's turn the dial and let's have a new subject, Peter Hitchens. Well, these Sunday Times reports that Charles Moore has ruled himself out of the contest of the BBC chairmanship. Uh, this is, to me, a grave disappointment because it removes the, the prospect of hours of harmless fun from the country where we would have actually had Lord Snooty in charge of the BBC clashing incessantly with everybody there and quite possibly doing some good. I'm, I'm very saddened by this news. You'd have liked him to run... Oh, well, I think that... <sighs> I think the BBC uh, is uh, is a vitally important organisation, one that I wish uh, were more like what it was supposed to be, one which stuck to its charter and actually fulfilled the obligations. It it, it, it says that it will fulfil in its charter an agreement of, of mm. proper impartiality, which I think it's drifted away from for many, many years, really, since the extraordinary reign of Hugh, Hugh Carlson okay. Green. I'd <laughs> love to see somebody trying to counterbalance that, and I, I, I would have thought that Charles, who is uh, ultimately... A, a fair-minded gentleman uh, would be a very good person to do it, but that's all gone now. We have to look forward to somebody dull. Reg reg regular <laughs> listeners know that I always fear we talk too much about the BBC, but Peter's raised this. Maria, <laughs> are you imminent on this, Maria? I wouldn't worry too much, Peter. There are so many other Lord Snooties for the BBC to choose from. I'm hoping for a woman this time, frankly. Lady Snooty. Lady Snooty. A anyone in yeah. mind? <laughs> Great. Yes, I think Catherine My Burke. phone is on, actually. I'm, I'm waiting for this call. <laughs> well, so this I would last well, about four weeks, but what are four weeks they would be? This well, what, what are two weeks it would be if I got the job? <laughs> into that? I don't think that's likely, Peter. No, nor do I. My phone is definitely <laughs> not ringing. Um, Maria, um, the line to you is fabulous. We hear you in glorious Technicolor. Um, so why don't you tell us from the Sunday Express what the secret to a happier life is? Ah, well, this is um, page uh, 80 of the Sunday Express, and it's Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. It's very hard to find positive stories, frankly, this morning. But he's talking about uh, getting healthy, etc., which is something we really, if we're going to do it, now is the time. Um, and the benefits of cold water therapy for physical and mental well-being. He says a simple experiment changed his life and dramatically really reduced his stress levels. Almost two, year, two years later, it's still part of his daily routine. He started it two years ago. And as a cold water swimmer i'm a member of a polar bears club the girls that all go swimming and i from my vantage point up on the hill looking at the sea i give them daily weather conditions as to whether or not we can swim it is fantastic for your mental health mm. and if you don't fancy it really as a first as a first timer start with a cold shower it's very, very pleasing. It's a bit like when people don't go into the water every day, as he says. Hugh says, I feel invigorated and ready for anything. He's not missed one day and I can't start my morning without it now. It would be like missing my first cup of tea. Gr so I'm a big, big <laughs> recommender of cold water swimming. Grace, it sounds like you're, you're, I'm worried you might be actually suffocating. What, what do you make of <laughs> Maria's advice? I just think that in media London, I'm never more than about an hour away from somebody who recommends <laughs> and I go cold water swimming. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's, and I always just have the same face, the same expression every time. It's not, this is why we invented swimming baths so that you can, no. <laughs> so that you can go there and be warm and drink some and drink some vending machine coffee afterwards. So no, no, no you're, that's you're, no you're, right, Paddy. I, I'm it's sure so you're wrong. I, I I admire people who do this from a distance, Mrs. <laughs> Hitchin swims in freezing cold rivers. Oh. She swims in the Rhine. She swam in the wonderful River R in Bern, and she swims in our local rivers in Oxford. And she recommends it highly, so highly. You should that join one, her, Peter. So highly it that one, one, one day I may do it. But I went to boarding schools. I've had enough cold showers uh, to last a lifetime. And the, the, the idea that a cold shower is an introduction to this doesn't actually make me think that it's a good idea. I may I may hang on for a bit before I start swimming. You, you might have missed Maria's dig there. She said, it would swim, it would cheer you up, Peter. 
I, 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 as you know, Penny, I'm one of the most cheerful people in life. It's, it's pessimists such as me are extremely cheerful. We're never disappointed, and often pleasantly surprised. <laughs> this, this, this foul rumour that I'm gloomy has been spread by my enemies for many years. It's not true. Um, Maria, back you started this. Just back yes. to you on on the cold swim. Is it is it a good idea to get in the water quickly or slowly? I'm a big fan of getting in quickly, like a warrior. You must never dilly-dally, because each time you go, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, because it's so cold, you expend energy. So if you keep that internalised, like a Scientologist giving birth, and internalise <laughs> that pain, and you stride in purposefully, you will find it so much easier. You don't have to stay in long. It's basically just the, the first hit. How do you know about Scientologists giving birth, though? This is something yeah. I didn't know before. Oh, well, everyone knows that, surely, oh, obviously, Peter. Obviously, obviously not. <laughs> I, remember, I remember the uh, former editor of the Financial Times being on this news review, if that's what it's called, <laughs> and I said to him, now, Lionel Barber, I see you want to talk about Scientologists. And he waved his hand at me, and I'd misread the word. It was scientists that he wanted to, <laughs> wanted to talk about. So with that in mind, I, I feel the moment has come to change the subject. Grace Dent, where to next? Um, I um, wanted to talk about Cine World, uh, the, the cinema chain. It was a news story that I heard very late last night and it's just broke my heart a little bit that, um, that they are preparing to close all of their 128 theatres in the UK and Ireland, putting 5,500 jobs at risk. This seems to link in to uh, the news that we had last night about the new James Bond film that's coming up, which has been pushed back to April 20, 2021. So this is, you know, it, it's a trickle down effect. P basically, people are not going to the cinema, and you know, that kind of breaks my heart because, I mean, I'm not a scientist, but I would say that's probably one of the, the safer places you can go. The cinema, you can go in, you can sit far from people, you can keep your mask on all the way through, you can go in bathed in, <laughs> bathed in. If you want, I just feel that we should be going to the cinema mm. and uh, use it or lose it because what are they going to do with all these huge buildings if they all uh, start to hit the dust? So, yeah, it's made me sad. Well, it, it is very sad, but I fear that the government has actually destroyed the cinema as well as it's destroyed the theatre and so many other things. It's, it's a loss. I mean, you, don't think for, the, for, you don't think that the virus did that? But. No, the, the virus didn't. The, the, the virus did nothing. It was the government's crazy panic response that, that has created all these problems, not the, not the virus. I mean, Maria, the cinema we... will be a loss. I mean, childhood days in the gospel criterion sitting, sitting mm. and, and also, as Graham Greene said, really cruel men like to cry in the dark in cinemas. What will cruel men do now? now okay. the cinemas will... um, let me ask you all to listen to the Prime Minister as Mark Mardell... Must we? Yes. <laughs> well, it says Mark Mardell promised that there is an interview. He's toured the BBC TV studios. I've been speaking to Andrew Marr and we want our listeners to hear what he has said about COVID all the way up to Christmas. They're furious with me and they're furious with the government. They are. But, mm. but, but... You know, I've got to tell you, in all candour, it's going to continue to be bumpy through to Christmas. It may even be, may even be bumpy beyond. But this is the only okay. way to do it. Now, what do you make of that? What do you make of that, uh, Maria? You, Peter's blaming the government, not the virus. What, there's the Prime Minister warning us to go to Christmas with bumps. Oh, well, I don't know what we think about the Prime Minister. And my, actually, my last story, let me just tie that in. It's um, Mark Steele in the Daily Mirror talking about the rule-proof guide to coronavirus confusion. And he's saying, <laughs> because none of us know what to do anymore, he's saying, to start with, the maximum number of people allowed in a room is zero. So if you find yourself in a room, you must leave immediately. You can go to work, but not go to work unless you go to the pub. And he finishes, it's very funny, you must read it, but he finishes with saying, if you've been within two metres of a bee, you must move to Peterborough. <laughs> and also, Stanley Johnson is entitled to do whatever he likes, as long as he goes on Good Morning Britain afterwards and says, I'm Stanley Johnson, so I'll do whatever I bloody well like. I'm just tying that into the first story. No, <laughs> Grace, I wonder, do you want to be the reviewer who has sympathy for people in authority trying to make these rules for the first time in our living memory? Peter's very fierce in his criticism. Do you think, do you have, do you have sympathy for the decision makers, Grace? Mm, no. <laughs> I think that things are a little... <laughs> 
was really trying to. Uh, no, no, I think that things are incredibly confused at the moment, and uh, and and they could be uh, being implemented more smoothly and in a more reassuring manner, and in a way that doesn't okay. suddenly mean that I. Uh, 11 o'clock last night, I find out that one of my favorite cine chains, cine world chains, is, is literally, you know, shutting its doors. These these things are serious. You know, these these, these aren't just news stories that you kind of put aside. It, exactly exactly as we've just said, these are fundamental parts of, of people's childhoods. Mm, Going to the cinema, it's a wonderful thing. Let's turn to the Sunday Telegraph's cartoon, Peter Hitchens. What's it about? Well, it's... It, it, it's by Bob Moran, who I think is one of the, the best cartoonists uh, drawing in newspapers at the moment. It's, it's, it depicts a man, a uh, mask around most of his face with his nose sticking out, uh, shoelaces undone, reading a book called How to Stay Safe as He Walks into a Manhole, uh, which I think is a very, uh, a, a very good depiction of this country at the moment, frantically trying to stay safe from a, a virus which is actually, although serious in some cases, not a major threat, while it plunges into a, an economic catastrophe in which everything will be closed and Christmas will become an arrestable offence. He ha has got something of okay. the tradition of, of, the, of the great... Um, British cartoonists yeah. going back to Tenniel and I think he's he's worth watching as someone who can sum up with humour and seriousness a lot of what's going on I think cartoonists don't get mentioned enough and they I think don't. that he, he deserves one. They only really get mentioned on here by Barry Cryer. There's also some lovely landscaping the by the way of the, tr of the leaves blowing off the trees in the autumn in the autumn background. I've just, got which you can now Peter. Into. No no I just, I just love this stuff. <laughs> I've got I've got <laughs> I've got Matt's cartoon in the Sunday Telegraph before I come to you, Maria, for your next selection. It is a TV a report with a couple on the sofa. Warning, some viewers should be ashamed of their reaction to the next report from the White House, is Matt's um, cartoon. And you've got that for us as we close the review from the Sunday Telegraph, Maria. Yes, I have. This is um, basically the Rose Garden super spreaders. I have to be very quick, I'm sure. Basically, as a, as a result of the super, uh, the Sunday, uh, the Rose Garden uh, function, which was for Amy Coney Barrett to not her nomination, 18 people, count them, 18. There's lots of pictures of nobody wearing a mask, no social distancing. It's completely against all the guidelines. I know Peter will be spitting feathers at this, but no masks. You wear masks to protect others, okay. not yourself. That's what you think. Thank you very yeah. much indeed. I'm sure you'll all return. It was the BH News Review in the safe hands of Peter Hitchens, Maria McCurlane, whose name is normally pronounced differently, and Grace Dent. Thank you all very much indeed.